How to learn with Anki for the short term? Of course, meaning that the material in question needs to be memorized quickly and efficiently. Here I give 7 great tips on how to do so for anything really, medical school, language learning, etc. You might want to learn for the short term because it would free you up with more time. Or you just want to learn the stuff now. I feel you. That's my desire too. This is how it's going to be done. I will tell you about the required settings, add-ons, and a few other basic things that you might want to learn so that you can efficiently learn on Anki. Watch until the end to see my Anki stats for my fast learning language deck, as well as how your own stats might hint towards some secrets. One more thing, if you want to be featured on the next video, make sure to comment anything you want. It could be a question, feedback, anything you find interesting, etc. And I'll make sure to pick randomly one of you guys to appear in my video in the future. Adding cards. Anki itself does not have any language learning materials, or any materials in matter of fact. It is only a program that follows the spaced repetition cycles for any data you add yourself. There's a page linked below where the community shares their decks and you can benefit from that since you don't have to spend your own time making cards, but rather you can start studying right away by borrowing the decks there. To create cards, you have to press the add button on the top when clicked on a deck. The cards will be added to that deck that was first clicked at. In the adding cards window, you have fields that can be changed in their purposes. You can also add tags to manage your cards. It becomes useful when you have many of cards. Anki Browser. The Anki Browser is a place where you can preview and see an overview of all your cards in each deck. You can do many different things here, such as filtering by so many characteristics as well as to search for any specific cards. You can batch edit cards as well, such as suspending them, deleting them, adding tags, resetting their review dates, or moving them to different decks. Anki Preferences. Preferences are a global setting that affects the entire Anki program. You can access preferences by going to Tools, Preferences on Anki's main window. I recommend turning off Show Next, Review Time, Above, Answer Buttons in the Scheduling tab. When this is turned on, when reviewing cards, an estimate of the next time a card will be shown is displayed above each Answer button. This can make you second guess your memory and grade cards too conservatively. It's better to trust the algorithm and not worry about specific numbers. At the start, I was worrying too much and wasting a lot of time. Another thing I would recommend is to sync your Anki on desktop to the network with Anki Web. This would allow you to sync your data across multiple devices. To set up Anki Web account, go to Network tab. Anki Options. The difference between Anki Preferences and Options are that the former affects all decks and everything that is generalized for the use of Anki. The latter is the customization of Anki's spaced repetition algorithm, the math behind the interval of days between each review that are set when reviewing cards. At the top of the options window, you can see which options group is being applied to the current deck. An options group is a set of options. You can change an option group for each deck or have multiple decks to share one single option group. Recommended option settings. You would think that Anki's default options for the deck is already said to be the best, but that's not the case. There was a lot of research done by the Refold community, a community that learns languages especially with the aid of Anki. This is the options that were recommended. In the New Cards tab, this is the following options. Steps 1, 10. Order. New cards in order added. New cards per day. 10. You can change this to your liking. This controls how many cards that you will see, and these cards are new. Make sure to not make it too big of a number, because you might get a large amount of reviews later on. Graduating interval 1. Easy interval 4. Starting ease 131%. Checked bury related new cards until the next day. You might want it on or not, it's your preference. Basically, when a node has two cards, checking it would make two cards never appear on the same day when reviewing. I feel it is cheating when you already have seen another version of the same note on the same day. It creates an artificial hint. On the reviews tab, maximum reviews per day, set it to 9999. Easy bonus, 130%. Interval modifier, 191%. Maximum interval, 36500. Checked bury related reviews until the next day. In the lapses tab, steps, 10. New interval, 
50%. Minimum interval 1. Leech threshold 6 lapses. Leech action suspend card. In the general tab, ignore answer times longer than 60. Unchecked show answer timer. Checked automatically play audio. Unchecked always include question side when we're playing audio. Please see the next chapter of this series for additional information on Anki add-ons. The Anki add-ons that I use are reset ease, no penalties or boosting, and heat map. They're extremely useful for motivation and the correct use of the Anki algorithm. I'll include more information in the next chapter. Studying with Anki. To study a deck, select the deck from Anki's main window and press study now. When studying, Anki will show you the front side of a card and prompt you to reveal the back side with show answer. Once the back side of a card is shown, you will be prompted to grade it. When grading a card in Anki, you'll choose from four different options. Again, hard, good and easy. For reviews, all these options will be shown. For new cards, only again, good and easy will be shown. For lapsed cards, only again and good will be shown. I strongly recommend only using the again and good options and avoiding the hard and easy button. It has been proven that there's no use for the hard and easy buttons and it can actually hinder some of your card's interval development. This is an advanced topic, but on this fact, trust me. Anki stats. You can view various statistics about your studies by clicking on stats from Anki's main page. You can enjoy many of the stats that you collect while studying, but here there are some important things to keep notice of. For example, in the answer buttons, your retention rate, the percentage of cards that you grade good or easy, your retention rate is split into three categories, learning, young, and mature. Learning corresponds to cards that are in the process of being learned. Young corresponds to cards that you have fully learned, but you continue to review at least once every 20 days. Mature corresponds to cards that you only review every 21 days or more. Retention rate only matters for mature cards. Learning cards are cards you haven't fully learned yet, so it's natural you won't remember them. Similarly, young cards are cards you've learned recently, so they don't really have a strong root in your memory yet. In the context of language learning, the ideal retention rate for mature cards is between 80 to 90 percent. You can manipulate your retention rate by setting the interval factor to something higher. This basically would make the space between each review of a card greater. The greater the space between reviews, the less you would remember of the card when it shows up again. It is good to sacrifice a bit of retention of information for time. It can be very time consuming when you frequently review hundreds of cards each day. A low interval factor gives you high retention but is shown more frequently than it should. A high interval factor gives you a lower retention. And that's okay, don't worry. And it decreases the amount of time per daily review. 